lot of you will have SAP. I, I assume most of you are not on HANA, so that's the SAP that you probably used to. Um, I could demo this on HANA as well, no problem. But uh, you know SAP, the different menus. And then, of course, what we bring on top of SAP is something like this, right? And what you'll notice is it runs on a browser. So uh, you can run it on your phone, on a tablet. You know, you can even have those little scanners nowadays. Not that we recommend it, right? If you really have a warehouse operation, you want to go with the real devices that people can drop to the concrete uh, a few times and whatnot. So we call it IP54 standard type of device. But if you're in sales and you need to go in the warehouse, find something quickly and bring it to a trade show or to a client as a sample, definitely can use your phone. All you need is a username and password. So as you can see, you log into a company that you have on SAP. Username and password, right? <clears throat> and then it says uh, somebody else was logged on. I'll pick them out. And then I want to show you guys. You can have different warehouses. If you're going to be working in the in the shipping area, maybe you have two or three different printers for labels, for packing slip, for receipts. So based on where you are in the warehouse, you'll select the printer that's closest to you, of course. And then you'll have the different menus. Right, so I'll just do a quick overview. Um, I have five minutes left, so I'll, I'll show you very high level what's in the box. And by the way, if you have different devices, if it's a tablet you're using, or if it's a wearable device, the system is fully responsive. What I mean by this is, let's say I have something that's more on my forearm, and the screen is more like this. You see that it readjusts automatically to, 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 to use the real estate that you have available on your device. Right, so it's great because that's fully responsive, like a responsive website that you may have for your company. Um, I think it's fairly straightforward, but of course I've been exposed to this for years, so I, I'll explain what it is. If there's something coming in the door, obviously it's inbound. I'll be able to do receiving. As you can see, I have over 99 POs are open that at some point will come in, I'll receive. I can do container receiving, which is the case for a lot of clients nowadays that import material. Once it's received either by re regular receipts or container, the system can direct me to go put it away where it belongs. And that's where WMS is useful because it basically will allow you to consolidate the same items in the same bin. So you don't need to know. It's a student that's there, doesn't know the product, doesn't know the area. He'll be told, go there, place this in that bin, and then go there next and place the other thing in that bin. So you're able to do put away and the system will direct people. So we call it directed put away. Sometimes people are coming in with the uh, products and the labels you are using already, but they're scratched or damaged, so you can reprint labels. But I'll show you as well how you can print labels for products that come in that do not have any barcodes on them. And of course, you could unload the container. Maybe you're not receiving it, because maybe you received it when it hit the water uh, when it shipped China. Now it's in your warehouse in transit or on the water. It, you know, it's on your books already. So what you want to do is probably just unload the container. So that's why these are different options. Outbound speaks for itself. We'll do picking. We can do packing. We can do shipping. We can print the labels. We can print the packing slip. So you know we'll do a transaction of that if we have time. Some of you may do production, and this is more an option that we put because we're very, very tightly integrated to business one. And some people say, I need to go pick my items to make my stuff. I still have to take them out of bins, those raw material and components, so I can assemble my stuff. So can you also direct me to go pick the content of the bill of material? It's not a sales order, but I, I do need to pull stuff out. So that's why we have picking for production, which looks at the work orders in business one and says, here's what you have for items that you need to pick. And then we can transfer them to different production lines. And of course, because we did it so far, we said, all right, let's go ahead and do the receipt. So we'll update the production order to say, here's what we made finally, and here's what we consumed for raw material. And of course, we need to return what, what was not used into the shelf. So that's more of an unusual for a warehouse management system to do this, but because we're tightly integrated to business one, we did it. Manage RMAs, then of course, we're able to, you know, if you authorize it in SAP, then when it hits the dock, Two weeks later, and there's an RMA number, then we're able to receive the RMA, and then we'll create the goods receipt as a return in SAP. But before that, it's just a service call where you took 
the client's information, why they return it, and then you authorize it, and the system allows you to receive it here in the warehouse on the handheld. In SAP, you know that you have the transfer request because you have multiple warehouses. Again, a lot of people would say, I need to do a transfer request. Yeah, but what's going to happen on the floor? People still need to pull stiff stuff out of bins, pack them, put them in a truck to then send them to your West Coast warehouse. So that's why it's almost like a, it's also like a sales order, except it's for an internal warehouse transfer, but we still need to pick it. We need to ship it and we need to receive it on the other side as well. So that's why we have a warehouse transfer. And of course, the typical stuff that we need to do, sometimes we need to have an inventory inquiry. Where's this stuff? I need to go get it to leave and bring a sample to the client. Should you have authorization, you would not want to give this to everybody, but um, how do I do an inventory adjustment? I just walked by, there's a bag that's damaged, I need to deplete inventory. Um, and of course, I can do cycle counting, I can do non-directed cycle count, I can do replenishment if I have unit picking area. And at night, I want to replenish, I want to go get some pallets to replenish my unit pick faces then the system automatically will direct people to say, go get this over there, and then bring it over here where it's units, a little bit like you see at Sam's Club or Costco, right? At night, they let down some of the big pallets that you see overhead so people can pick at the floor level the next day. Well, same type of process. And I'll, uh, I'll finish by just doing a receipt. I'll show you a, a very quickly a receipt. If I go into purchasing here in SAP, right? I'll just do a purchase order. So you've seen the screen before, I'll select a client, the date. I'll take any product here, just a bamboo here, and I'll take this product, which is LUT Manage, right? It's chocolate LUT Manage. I could even put a note. Maybe I want to communicate something to the user on the floor, say, be careful, this vendor is making mistakes. I could say, be careful. And then, of course, what's going to happen is that uh, I could add it. I'm about to create uh, purchase order 933. If I come here on the handheld device and I would put Receiving, the first question I'm being asked is, what's the purchase order? You look at the paperwork that the carrier just left, you say it's 933. The system will say it does not exist. Of course, I didn't save it yet in SAP. My point here is to show you that it's really in real time. So as I am here in SAP and I'm gonna click add, you know, it really is something now that's existing in SAP 933. If I go back on this and I put 933, you'll see it's there. And as you remember, I have to ask people, where where are you receiving this, right? You're not in a bin yet. Maybe it's a big barcode next to the door says receiving, or you take a label on the belt, you have a roll of labels, and you just put it on the pallet, and you say it is, uh, you know, I just scan it, you scan it, it's Cornerstone 10, and then you say, all right, the system says this product that you're receiving is needed on a lot of sales order with back orders. And also, because my system here is configured as cross dock. So it's telling me where orders were already waiting for this product that I'm receiving. I don't need to do anything if I just want to still receive it. I'm just to next. And now the system says, all right, you're about to receive these two products. If you have Barco, which there's still 42% of products coming into warehouse in America that do not have proper barcode that you guys can use. So that's why if you have barcode, you click here and you start scanning. If you do not have barcode, you can just tap the screen, right? You tap the screen, no need to use the keyboard. And this is where I was telling you, in my case, I configured my system as a blind count. I know all of your employees, if I would put the quantity here, I'm sure they would still count. But some employees, sometimes if I would put 75 here, they look at the pallet, they say, yep, looks like 75. And then that's where you know the, the inventory discrepancies and issues start. So I would put two here, one, go back, <clears throat> and then I could go with this product, but if you call this product is chocolate, and that's why it's asking me for a lot number or batch number. So I could scan or enter the lot number, batch number, confirm the quantity, <clears throat> and then of course, I could come back here and say, oh, I see another one of these. So I would put an additional one. Now the system challenges me. says, hey, you're about to receive more than what we ordered. And that's, again, how we check on people. We validate and we challenge them to say, are you sure about this? So 
this is where you can say, no, I'm sure I counted properly and now we're at two. And when you're done, then I challenge people, say, all right, you're receiving two, we ordered one. You're receiving one, we ordered one. If you made a mistake, you can trash this. If you don't have barcodes on your boxes, absolutely fine. Just click the barcode here and then we'll print all of the barcodes that you can put on the boxes. And then, of course, if you say all is good here, you save it. What's going to happen is on the handheld here, you just did the receipts and SAP. So if you go and you refresh this, <clears throat> excuse me, you will see that purchase order 933 is closed. And if we go just take the last receipt that was done, you will see that this receipt 683 is based on purchase order 933. And then you see that I fulfilled both lines that I had, but I am giving a visual cue to the purchasing people that this vendor pushed us some product that we didn't order. So purchasing can decide if they will accept or return this based on the policy that you guys have.